Well, good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are, or good evening even for that matter. Um, it's Diane Evans with StampinWithDiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So if this is one of your first times joining me on um, YouTube, just be aware that this is part of a live uh, presentation. So if you're watching it on replay, just um, beware because I will probably be talking or answering questions to different people that have joined me live today. So, um, but make sure that you do subscribe and then that way you'll get notified when I do go live. Also, another thing is if um, you are on um, Facebook, I may not know who you are unless you've joined in through my Facebook page. So welcome. This is Monday morning and this is when I collaborate with Judy Anderson from the United States. So I'm excited to get going on this. This is, um, um, we've decided what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the product that is in the um, Spring Into Blooms. Is that what it is? It's the um, Spring Into Blooms sale. It's a great sale. It goes um, from the beginning of March to the end of March, um, but you get 20% off. And some of them, they rebundle together to give you that 20% off. So you know what? Good morning, Peggy. Um, so what I think I will do is I will just hop on right on down to my desktop and let's get going. So today, um, and like I say, until the end of June, this mini cut and emboss is at 20% off. Like, I don't know what anyone else says, but look at this. 2.5 pounds, great deal at 20% off. Um, so that goes until the end of um, March. And I'm really shocked actually, because I've never seen that kind of a sale ever before. And then I'm going to be playing with the What's Cooking. This is a great stamp set, great bundle. If you are into any kind of cooking, um, I thought making recipe cards would be really, really cute with this. I thought that um, uh, I, I think you can do an awful lot with it. I've done a lot with it. And actually what I'm going to do today is something that I've done on my free online class that I give on Tuesday nights. We are going to do an easel box. So this is the box. It's just like this. It has a drawer that goes in there, but I had done this for my free online class. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to share how to do that because it actually, I need to have this done again for um, uh, a blog that I'm actually going in. And um, so it has to be anything but a card. So I thought this box would be really good for putting like even a recipe card in, an unusual recipe size recipe card, but it still would be good. So I've got a bunch of the paper. I'm going to give you the measurements, but this blog won't be going live until about the 24th of March. And that's where I will have the written instructions um, or the written sizes down there. So we have, I'm using black and I love this checkered with the black. It's just amazing. It's the party time. I believe it's called party time um, designer series paper. This paper is actually available as a host um, gift. It's called Pattern Party and it comes in a pack of 48 sheets and it's amazing but it has some of this black and white on the back but I love this checkered. This checkered is really singing out to me. So if the ladies that have, were on my um, online class they're just going to get uh, another refresher on how to make this easel card. So I have this four and a quarter by 11 and I've gone ahead and I have scored it at one inch five and a quarter inch, six and a quarter inch, and then a 10 and a half inch. And this is what's going to form my box. Now I know I always say fold into the mountain. I am telling you this time to just fold into the valley. And it's just because of getting the right sizes for the inside of the box. So that's going to form just like that to give us our box. Now I'm not gonna put that together yet because we're gonna decorate part of it. I also have the easel part of this card. This happens to be four and a quarter by eight and a half, and I've scored it at four and a quarter and six and three eighths. So this, when it folds and goes on there, it's just going to come, and that's going to be the easel part. I also have the box, the bottom of the box. 
And the bottom of the box is six and an eighth by six and an eighth. And I've scored it one inch all the way around. And we'll show you how to cut that. So I think what I'll do before I put any of the stuff together is I'm going to do a lot of the stamping and get some of the um, base parts done for the card. Now, this is a distinctive stamp. It gives some really nice um, distinctiveness to it. But another thing that I really like about it is that it helps you color with your stamping blends. So I have a piece. This is just four by four. Same with this and the white. And those are happening to be certain parts that are going onto the box. So let's just go ahead and stamp some of this stuff. So I'm going to want to have the pots done. I want to have um, uh, the salt and pepper shaker or the, the grinders and also the bowl. So I'm going to do the bowl actually in a smoky slate. I just... I needed another one of these actually it's um um i gave i i decided that i was going to give these away for a certain little thing um for a thank you for somebody all right so i'm also coming in with my memento because i'm going to be coloring with my stamp and plants so let's do the salt and pepper and then we're also going to use the pots and pans as well like so all right now in order to do some of this other stamping I have a piece of let's see I want to do the rolling pin I want to do in the crumb cake plus also I want to do um, this piece here which is like a it could be like a um, chopping board and we're going to make it like a chopping board so I'm going to come in with my crumb cake and I know I've shown this a few times but what you want to do ah awesome oh five o'clock in the morning oh my goodness Annie that's very early that's down in Australia right and Margaret's here from Sydney as well wow that's amazing Okay, so what I've done is I've just put this into my um, crumb cake and I'm going to come in, just going to put that down like that. I'm going to grab this up and I'm going to run that through the cut and emboss. And you'll see that what it's going to do is it's going to give us the wood grain part. Let me just go up like this. Oh my goodness, I can't get that up. Oops, I just moved it. We'll be okay. I can get it back in the same spot. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this on my cut and boss. And you'll see that I'll get the wood grain on the crumb cake. That'll kind of add to a bit of the authenticness of this look of this. Hello, Janet. Okay, so we have that. And see, just by doing this, what I've done is I've given a wood grain look to the wood block. That's that for now. And then I have actually gone out and I've already cut these out. But I want to show you how I did go ahead and stamp these. So I have also the rolling pin and I have the spatula and I want them to have a wooden handle. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to stamp them in crumb cake on the crumb cake. And then we're going to do that with the rolling pin as well. Just like so. And then I'm going also with this piece of crumb cake. I mean, this piece of um, the spatula. I'm coming in also with the crumb cake. And I'm just going to stamp on my poppy parade because I want a red tip to the spatula. Now, I know that seems like a lot of detail for what to do with the cutting in that or the stamping. But I wanted to do that. 
Now, before I color, and this is something that I always do, um, I always cut first, then color. And the reason being for that is because after you've taken all the time to color with your um, stamping blends, and if you've cut it out the wrong way, then you could be upset because you may have to recolor it and redo that. So I've actually gone ahead and I've cut all that out with my mini cut and emboss. So I have my different um, elements that are here. So I have my bowl. I have my salt and pepper grinders. And see, you can see what I mean. I went and I'm actually going to have to cut those out again because I didn't do a very good job cutting those. So let me just bring that back in. And I have this piece. And let's go ahead and cut out those salt and pepper grinders. And it's kind of nice because with this, this die cut, we've got the salt and pepper grinders we've got in one full piece. So let me just do that. I mustn't have paid too much attention when I went to do that. Let me just take my... Post-it note tape. I'm just going to put that there and we'll just run that through. So much for saving time, right? Um, crumb cake is the most used um, stamp pad. You know what? I honestly have to say, I think my memento is the most used at this point. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a great color in order to... Um, do sponging with, to give it an antique look, to give it a vintage type look. Um, but yes, I haven't been using it as much as I've used in the past. Um, I used to be really, really bad at not using proper, um, not using the colors from our palette, but now I'm using them more. Okay, as you see before, what I did was I went and I had stamped this in the Poppy Parade. So all I want to do is I just want to glue that onto there to give the red spatula. I know there's a bit of detail to this, but you know what? Take your time to do some things and sometimes it's good. I like doing simple as well. Hello. Well, I'm really glad. It is a versatile color. It really is. Now, I'm thinking that maybe I can get away with just using Poppy Parade just on the handles. I don't know. I know my mom used to have a rolling pin that had red. Actually, the red paint was all chipped off the rolling pin handle. You wonder how good that was for everything. We survived it though. Okay, so I've got my rolling pin like that. I've got my bowl. So let's go ahead and um, color some of this stuff. So as far as the um, shakers, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna come in and I'm just going to bring some of the color back into these other elements. So I'm just putting a bit of red across here. I'll tell you though, when it comes to crumb cake, crumb cake and my blends are the most used because I use the blends, the um, light and the dark crumb cake. I use them in, um, whoops, I can, you can tell, in almost every color that I do because you can actually sit and mix your crumb cake with um, other colors. So I'm just gonna go in and get a bit of the, I'm gonna have it like a wood. Wood um, salt and pepper mills is what they are, right? Just laying down my light color first, get it saturated, and then I'll come in with my dark and we'll just put some accent parts on there. Uh, well, I don't know. I think the, I use the memento so much because I do an awful lot of coloring. And be besides, I find it a really good black. 
and then let's just go back in let's get those lines away there we go don't need that colored okay we have those done i've got i'm gonna leave my bowl just as it is in there now my pots and pans i'm actually going to come in with my smoky slate we're just going to add a bit of color to that just like so i don't know what the weather's like everywhere else we know what it's like down in sydney it's pretty rainy um i um there, we're just going to leave that like that. And you know what? I think what we'll do too is we're going to have red handles on those pots. Why not, right? Yes. There's so much. Like, I've always combined crumb cake with a lot of the other colors. All right. So we've got that colored. I've gone ahead and cut out these spatulas there. Now I think we're almost ready that I can start putting everything together. All right. Let's get rid of this. Now, like I say, let's go ahead and let's get the box together. We'll just put that all off to one side. I gave you the measurements at the very beginning. So now what we want to do is on this box, we are going to score. I'm actually going into the mountain this time. And it's just taking a tiny bit of an edge off of it. And I'm going to um, just a smidgen off. And I'm just going to come in. And I'm just going to cut down here. Cut here. Now, if you wanted to make this a sturdier box, what you could have done was eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter instead of the six and a quarter by, or six and an eighth by six and eight. So you would do it um, eight and an eighth square um i'm thinking that this will be okay it, it's not going to have much um weight to it so we'll be okay there All right so let's go in with our bone folder i love making 3d things When I had that opportunity for our team um, blog hop to do anything but a card, I decided this would be the best. And then I had this already done. So. so let me just put this together. And I'm putting it together with glue. You could use um, tear and tape with this as well. Just gives me a bit of wiggle room with it. So let me actually put the glue on all pieces and then it's going to set up and that's what judy has taught me in the past year or so judy how long have we been doing this i have no idea how long we've been doing this so anyways you let your glue set up a bit and it's going to it's going to be tacky or faster and it'll glue faster yeah 3d projects are a lot of fun to do I remember one time when that's all I used to do was 3D. Well, not all. So the flooding had stopped, has it, Margaret? Let's say, here in British Columbia, boy, can we ever sympathize with flooding. We couldn't even get down. We couldn't even get our, our stamping up orders. Um, because it was all going through the mainland. Um, they've just opened up the highway, kind of. But, uh, oh, shoot. And what I should have done was I should have put this. And, you know, this should have been just a less than an inch. So I've got these one inch by, uh, let's see, they're right to the end. So I really should make these pieces a tiny bit smaller. So let me grab in my trimmer. Oops. So these are going to be, let's just go in and measure whoops, seven eighths of an inch and take off 
How about, is that going to be enough? Let's check that out. You know what? Maybe we should have just gone three quarters. And I think that's what we'll do is we'll go a quarter of an inch less. Let's see how that's going to be. And then this will also be, instead of it being, this is four inches, we'll go three and three quarters. And then that should be good. So we'll go three quarters on here. And three and three quarters. And this piece as well. And then the other pieces should be okay because they weren't measured that way. All right. Here we go. Okay, so these are just going to go on three sides of the box. Yeah, that'll be good. So I'm just going to use my glue again. Yes, so sad. Oh my goodness. Um, we lost so much livestock. All of our, um, in one area that's just outside of um, Vancouver here, it um, we lost a lot of dairy um, cows. We lost a lot of chickens, a lot of um, pork. Um, pigs and that sort of stuff. So yeah, we lost a lot of stuff. Plus, our one of our major road, well, all of our major roads to Vancouver were completely flooded out. And before that, of course, we had all those fires. So um, that's what's created all the floods in all our mountains because there was nothing holding the... Um, the water back and the and the mud back. All right, so we have that. I actually, oh darn it! See, I'm really losing it today. These shouldn't have even been. They should have only been on one side of the box. So you know, instead of doing that, I'm going to turn around and just cut some more. Hey, I'm having Judy's day is what I'm having. <laughs> right, Judy? Anyway, so let's go. This is one inch. So we're going to go. My goodness, here we go. We're going to go. I think we're going to go three quarters of an inch. Okay, three quarters of an inch. I need to do this on two sides. And it's going to go there. And this is going to be four inches. I'm having a Judy day. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Judy. That didn't mean to pick on you. All right. So now what we can do is we can put this part of the box. So these are going to go on here. And on here is where they're going. So... Before we go ahead and do that, this is going to be towards the back. I'm going to go ahead and put this piece onto here. Like so. It's going like towards the back and it's going to easel this way. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll decorate this first and then we'll put it together. I'm just wanting to get it put together. How sad is that, right? All right, so this piece is going to go right on here on the inside part. Just like so. And all we're doing like is a box, an easel card on a box. Now I see that I've also neglected to cut a four by four sheet. Four by, here we go. So we have another sheet that's going to go on here. So it's going to be four by four. Oops. Four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And all these measurements will be put back onto my blog. The perfection of the proper 
one. So see, this is going to work as an easel. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue this part on here. So I'm just going to line that up. And like I say, all we're doing is an easel card. Typical Monday. Well, it used to be a typical Monday for me. I know um, I laugh when people used to come to my house for classes, especially on a Saturday. Um, they would kill themselves laughing at me because I am, my first class was always the worst class. So let's just go ahead and put this together so you can kind of see where I'm heading first. So this is going to go on here. This is why I didn't need to have it all the way around on the box. Let's put this piece. I love this paper. I wish I could get all just black and white checkered. So appropriate for a lot of things. You could use it for a masculine card. This could be for a chef too, right? Right, so this is just going to go on here like so. So I'm just going to glue that and I'm going to let that just tack up a bit. All right. While well, that's doing that, I'm going to layer this piece back onto here. We're going to decorate this easel part before we put it all together. So there's this. And then I, I did cut a piece of basic white and I just used it. I just wanted some white back there. And this is out of the tailored tags. So let's go ahead and put that on. Just like so. And now we're going to start layering some of this stuff on here. So here's this um, it could be like a um, pizza board or it could be, I would think it's more like a, um, um, a wood, a chopping block. So we're going to go ahead. I think we'll put this on here like so. We'll put those on. We'll put this across there. Okay. Kind of got my idea of where I want to put some things. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use some dimensionals on this particular layer. See, I've got to cut that out. There we go. Let's just take that off. This is just going to lie across here. Let's put this one on. Just going to use a strip of my dimensionals on here. see this um, tool was in the wrong spot so I'm just going to kind of put that across there and now I have a piece here and I know what I'm going to put this I want to put this across here let's see um, I'm going to put a dimensional here and glue here don't want it to be uneven Just put this it's gonna put go with our sentiment is gonna go on there and I've got this is just going to go on with glue and it doesn't really matter on this particular one with the dimension because it's not like it's going into um, a card right so let's go ahead and put this here once everything's sort of done the putting together is the easy part right let's put this about there and of course we've got to put our salt and pepper mills on there now I'm going to use the strips off of this dimensionals too my ends go faster than my center part does. Just 
excuse me just for a sec. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking that we have, I don't know, um, a troll. How sad is that? Having to really block people off of your um, YouTube channel. It's worse at night for me anyways. Let's take these. And I think my favorite is the pepper mill. Just love it. Let's just put those there. Now what we're going to want to do is I'm going to want to put, um, I've got some spare white here. And let's go in with these words and go, what's cooking? And I'm going to use my memento. See, here I go again, using my memento again. I'm going to fussy cut that part out. Just like so. And then I'm just actually going to go ahead and I'm going to put this right onto, um, I'm going to kind of hold it there. And then we're going to cut out with this. We're going to fussy cut around it approximately an eighth of an inch. Because I want to pop both of these up, otherwise I would have already put them down. Let's see, just like so. I think this was one of the first sets. There was two sets actually that were my favorite sets when the um, the annual catalog first came out. It was this What's Cooking and that, that other die that was given to Whirl. And what did I do? I combined both of them together into one. Oops. Um, but I just love that Give It a Whirl and this set. So I was really happy when Judy picked another one. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like a troll is right. It's it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad that we have some of these sites come on and really we're we're people that craft. What part are we going to want to go into those kind of sites? Yeah, I I, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand people. So this is just gonna go right here. Okay, so I think I've got that kind of done. Now what we want to do is get the inside of this done. So I have a piece, and I think this piece is about two inch, no, one and three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch. And I'm just going to actually put this along the bottom. Because this is an easel, I want to get this part up. So I'm just going to lay this part down. And then we're going to pop up the other parts to make it stick up. And, you know, you could have just made this completely as the um, as an easel card, just like that. How simple would that be just as an easel card, right? All right. So now what we do, we have we have the bowl. So I want to make sure that we've popped that up. And, you know, I'm thinking, no, I think we'll be OK. I'm just going to pop this up about here. I have these two pieces here, or the spatula and the thing. So we're just going to put those together. Just like so. And then I'm going to pop this up just with one of these edges as well. And I've got enough stuff there that I can put it behind. Remember, this is part of the easel, so we want it to pop up, right? Let's see, just like so. So more to pop up. And then where is that spatula? There we go. We're going to 
put that spatula along there as well. So we're going to put dimensional right here, and then I'm just going to glue this part. Just like so. So see, that's going to be like that. And now what we can do is we can turn around and join these two together. And I might have let this, <laughs> somebody should have reminded me that this was tacking up here. We're tacking up our glue. There's a new word for you. Oh, thank you. I, I like red, black, and white, always have. All right, so let me just get that down like that. Just like so now we do need to have something on the front of this box. So they have this words, happiness is homemade. So let's go ahead and use that stamp. Come in with my memento again. Just going to put this, hopefully we get this straight. Not too bad. Now I'm gonna just trim this off a bit. Oh, and you know, I bet I'm not gonna find what I was looking for. I thought they were right here. And they don't look like they're right there. I want to put this on with dimensionals here and here. Oops. And you know, I'm going to see if I can find these quickly. We do have some brads, and brads always in the past used to be my favorite of all things. And these have little black and little red ones, so I'm going to grab out red, I mean black ones, and I'm going to see if I can poke those in, and you know. We don't have the tools that we used to have before, but we do have our take your pick tool. And this paper piecing mat, which it was originally set for. So I'm just gonna go here, and we're just going to put a brad right there. And I'm gonna do it in black. And oh my goodness, look at these long prongs on here. I'm going to do something and you, whoops, it's too big. You know, I'm going to switch this up because I've got them too big, the holes. And that's what we can do, right? We can always switch things if it doesn't work. So I'm just going to put this like this. And then we have our black matte dots or we have our classic matte dots I don't have to have my black right here oh they're right there <laughs> so you could use either the uh, matte dots or these dots whichever you have and I'm just going to go in and I want to put this it's going to look like a mat or a bra just like that and then that's going to go onto our box our box is right here so we're just going to put that on there. So let me just cut this down and trim it. Look at that. Now I'm going to be trimming back and forth all the time. This is just going to go across the front here. You know what? I'm just going to cut it straight down. 
had a thought process and it didn't work. Of course, that doesn't happen to anybody, right? All right. So this is just going to go onto the front of the box. Of course, we're going to put it up the right way. Yes. You know, it could be a card too. So I decided I wanted a box. Oh, look at that. I'm going to end up trimming this all completely away and it's not going to be straight. There we go. It's just going to go on there like that. And this is going to go in here. Whoops, we're going to hold that down for a second. Okay, well that's getting tacky down. What we're going to do is now I'm going to turn around and I am going to put this card onto this box. So let's go ahead. Just like so. So this is an easel drawer box, card, whatever. So we're just going to put that on there like that. And you see how I just sort of flattened that box out and it makes it a lot easier. Right, so this is going to pop up like so. And this is just going to go in here. And probably those two extra pieces of paper on the side is not that great. Oh, oh it's going to go in, so we're going to be good. There we go. So there's my box, my easel fold card box. So I hope you enjoyed that. Little winded. Um, but I'm tending to be more like that. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're going to give it a try. Um, like I say, as far as the measurements go, um, on the 23rd is when it's going to be posted live onto my blog. Um, or you can rewind and rewatch this because what's going to happen is that you can um, um, you can catch up on it. Yeah, we made this box in an online class. So, yeah, and, and a lot of times it's only a few people that get to see those projects. So I thought this would be a really good um, thing in order to do um, and to do so that you've got something to give to somebody. Um, like I say, to put some recipes in there or some cooking thoughts or anything like that. Don't forget about the spring into bloom um, sale. That particular bundle that I used, uh, the What's Cooking bundle, is at 20% off of the bundle price. So you're basically getting 30% off is what's happening with that. Don't forget about your mini cut and boss, your mini boss, your baby boss, whatever you want to call it. It's also at 20% off. Great time to buy this um, when um, it's that um, low of a price. So you guys have a great Monday. Sorry I had to go and cut a few things, but hey. That's what crafting is all about, right? And and can you change things and can, can you fix things? That's what we really want to be able to do. So um, stay tuned. We will see Judy tomorrow. Um, and um, can't wait to see what she does. I know which set she's using. So um, it's a beautiful set. If she didn't choose this set, I would have chosen this set too. So um, it's a beautiful set. So stay tuned. Uh, same time tomorrow. And we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.